Hello everyone, I haven't done a video in a long time, so I figured I would use this uh, uh, fix for my uh, Craftsman DGT 6000 tractor uh, for the transmission to um, do another video. Uh, so basically the tractor started uh, not uh, going as fast and not being able to go uphill. Uh, it could go it would go very slow even on flat ground and anytime you try to uh, go up an incline it struggled uh, it felt like the belt was burning um, but um, uh, definitely a transmission problem I replaced the belt to make sure that it wasn't stretched and uh, it seemed to help but uh, the problem came back right away so just as the belt basically stretched just a tad uh, to the normal size I would say uh, problem came back I replaced the oil in the transmission, hoping that that would do it. Uh, it's supposed to be a sealed transmission, no need to change the oil, but as you've seen in other videos, uh, that's not so, case, so much the case. This tractor has got a few years under its belt. Um, so uh, the next thing is to basically figure out what's wrong with the transmission. There is only one video out there taken about uh, five, maybe even seven years ago. Uh, by somebody that actually knows what they're doing and uh, on how to replace. Uh, there are two hydraulic pumps. This is a hydrostatic transmission. Uh, there are two hydraulic pumps inside the transmission and um, it, one or both could be the problem. So I'm going to take you along in this ride since I have no idea what I'm doing other than watching the video, uh, which was actually pretty good, um, to see if, uh, again, somebody that doesn't know how to do this um, uh, can actually figure this out. Uh, so step one is to take out the transmission, obviously. As you can see, we've already done that. So I'm going to kind of step you through uh, the steps here. Uh, it is actually very, very easy. There is basically uh, a clip right here um, holding off, holding on this bracket on a pin that's on the transmission. I'll show you it on the other end. This comes from the brake lever. And then there is <coughs> this bracket right here which needs to also be unscrewed. There is a bolt that goes right through that on the transmission side. And then finally, you take out this bolt down here, uh, the four bolts that hold it there and lower it and it comes right out. So very, very easy, of course, take the belt out. Here's what the transmission looks like. And um, I will need, I'll need to clean this up. I, uh, I actually have two compressors. None of them are right here right now, so I'll have to clean it up manually. But basically, uh, here is the transmission. Like I said, I've already changed the oil once. Uh, by taking out that black block that you see down there, uh, and the entire oil comes out, and then refill it from this, uh, this um, uh, area right here, and using this bolt as the fill level. So as soon as it starts ripping out of the fill bolt, uh, you can stop filling it. Uh, like I said, that did not help. So the next step is to replace these uh, or uh, replace one or both pumps that are inside. Um, also, the levers, uh, the first lever I showed you goes right on this pin. Okay, so basically take the cotter pin out and the lever comes off. And then the second one I showed you is bolted onto this guy right here. Uh, you can get in from the back side with uh, two hands and two, two wrenches to undo that bolt. Uh, so next step is I'm gonna clean it up, all this dirt. And I am gonna keep the oil that I put in since it's brand new. Uh, so once this is nice and clean, I am gonna probably uh, flip it back, flip it upside down and drain it into a clean container and capture as much oil as I can. So that's my next step. All right, so it's um, clean to the best of uh, my abilities with just water essentially and a little brush. I haven't drained it yet. And by the way, this is a Hydro Gear uh, 311-3500. Unfortunately, I cannot find a manual for this. Uh, I can only find the Hydro Gear 311-3000 series, I guess. Um, so it is uh, close enough. Um, but uh, also means, that, but also I cannot find the part numbers for those two pumps that are inside this thing. So my plan is to open it up, see which one uh, is bad. Hopefully just one of the two. They are about $70 a piece. And, um, and then call, um, you know, a place like Jack Small Engine online or something.com, uh, uh, something like that and, uh, and figure that out. By the way, these um, special bolts here, these uh, stamp pattern bolts, this is an E10, okay? Uh, 
Okay, so this fits nicely and uh, as soon as I drained it, I should be able to crack it open. Quick process update. Draining it from this tube was way too pathetically slow, which is just as slow from the bottom. So I did remove the little pump right there and um, it is draining now very slowly. Uh, keep in mind that there is a notch right there, as you can see, right there. That notch needs to go, I don't remember right now, I will point that out later, but it needs to go either towards the back or towards the front. Uh, I should say towards the back of the tractor. This is the back of the tractor, back of the transmission, or towards the front. I don't remember right now off the top of my head, but uh, that is important. I will point that out later. All right, so success in draining the oil. Um, so it's on the bench now, and uh, good to have uh, a cookie sheet underneath because it'll continue to drip a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna clean around the uh, shaft over here where the uh, brake uh, disc goes and uh, basically take out all these nuts all these bolts and take these out and uh, clean the shaft first so that um, the seal doesn't get damaged as the as you pull the as I pull the case out through the shaft the shaft should be able to remain in place although it should be inspected here there is a bunch of gears uh, but this shaft does need to come out so that's why this needs to get opened. Uh, by the way, the little notch right there that you see on the cover of the uh, of this lower piece right here goes towards the back of the transmission, which would be the back of the tractor. So I drew a little notch there so that I actually remember. All right, so that's the next step. And first cover is open. So this thing is uh, glued down. Uh, with whatever they use so we'll have to buy some stuff to uh, redo this gasket um, I think these are metal shavings they're normal and this is the magnet that uh, grabs most of the shavings or all of them so there's a little bit there not not too much and then this is the filter which I will likely replace since I will probably hopefully never open this again um, looks okay I guess that's not good and so then the next step is uh, I will take out these three bolts that one and oh that one's underneath so I don't know how I'm gonna take that out here's a ball valve right there I'm gonna grab that soon um, so somehow I'm gonna take this cover off but that bolt is under the cover so i have to figure that out and then this is the motor that um, propels the tractor and under here this is the pump that creates the hydraulic pressure to drive the motor um, so i will need to take this out by taking out this shaft which means taking out this cover um, but i expected these three bolts to be fully exposed so Maybe this cover comes right off, so I'll finagle with that and I will let you know. Okay, no big deal, actually. So this cover comes right off. Basically, just grab it from the edges here and pull it up. Basically, it's held in by this uh, gasket right here, uh, pressure against this um, machined uh, perimeter right here. So continue to dig in. All right, so definitely uh, no return at this point. It cracked open, um, wasn't easy because again, it's um, glued up, but there is a little notch right here, which I damaged to just, a, just a hair, uh, that allows you to put a screwdriver in there. And uh, yeah, I don't have much of a choice because that is the only entry point. So I looked all the way around. So you just have to put some leverage over there and eventually cracks open and then just go all the way around. The gears did fall off, but no big deal. They go right back onto these pins. And uh, so that whole uh, mechanism uh, looks beautiful, actually. Uh, no damage uh, that I can see, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna leave it exactly the way it is. This shaft did come out a little bit, so this is the one that has to come out. By the way, there are there is a washer right here, 
before this uh, clip so that I'm gonna leave it there and so that comes out and now I um, actually before I take these three out and the and the motor and the pump rather I am going to see if I can extract this motor right here um, it should be able to come right out by the way the magnet right here is on this little fork and basically it slides vertically right out of this place so I took that out I should be able to slide that motor out there is obviously pressure from these pins as you can see right here onto these uh, bearings so I should be able to compress a little bit and, and pull it right out if I'm gonna do that before I do this all right so I could not pull this back this this guy out uh, I had to decided to undo the three bolts which were freaking tight if it wasn't for this bad boy I would not have been able to get those things out so be prepared for that all right, so, uh, and as I took out the last bolt, the whole assembly kind of floated up because the um, the pump underneath looks, it's a smaller version of this guy right here, so it has these spring-loaded pins. Uh, so I just pushed it up, which I expected. So I'm gonna take this out now. Okay, so as I expected, everything came out nicely, smoothly, no issues. Um, there are two alignment pins, one over here and one over here that might come out. This one sort of popped up a little bit, so I just push it back down. It aligns that cup that goes on top here. Uh, the bearings, uh, I checked these out. They look beautiful. Uh, the thicker washer, by the way, goes in the back side this way. And this mechanism right here sits on the bottom right there. And this lever is the one that see if I can move it um, basically the uh, throttle uh, transmission um, speed uh, uh, is adjusted with this and it moves this sled um, in this motion right here this one also has bearing inside looks beautiful no issues um, the pump the smaller of the two um, unfortunately both of these guys the pump and the motor look beautiful as well if I do this, I don't feel any perceivable motion movement on these pins. That's what I expected to see on one or both of these guys. So the next step is um, I need to uh, get my caliper out and measure them and um, see if there is any differences in the pins and what the gap is between the pin and the hole right there. Um, these guys, I do see a little wear on the top, but I don't think that's anything to could be concerned. There's no scratches. Um, so, um, <laughs> everything worked out so far, but the problem now is I don't seem to know what the issue is. Uh, I did find this lever right here that moves that guy right there to be very tight. So I loosened up the spring. Um, and now I can move it by hand. Now I would be pretty upset if I did all this and that was the only problem where it was binding right there. Uh, this part down here that came up, see the three bolts right here. Um, it's, I think there are little ball valves right there so make sure that I flip them over right put my fingers on them. There is a pin here to be careful about. Okay, this um, basically is what bypasses the um, opens the bypass when you want to move the tractor without uh, the engine being on. Uh, pull the lever on the on the back side of the tractor, and basically um, the lever that comes outside goes right in there, and it basically pushes this out, and that bypasses the oil flow. So supposedly this part could be bad as well. Uh, so it could be one this guy right here, this assembly or the pump or the motor. I don't see, again, any scratches, um, but obviously, again, if it's worn out, um, as in the surfaces and it's um, uh, outside of spec uh, tolerances, then that's the problem. Um, I just don't know how to determine this. So I need to do uh, go get the caliper anyways, measure the pump, the, those pistons, and uh, see if that tells me anything to begin with. I'll be back. Okay, so after further investigation with the caliper, it would seem that it is the motor. 
uh, basically when I measure the cylinders versus versus the holes uh, the gaps are different uh, on all of these holes versus again the pins where for the pump the gap uh, the delta seems to be consistent across the four the, the five pins so I am gonna make a wild assumption that it's this guy and now the fun part is going to be researching uh, the actual part number. I do have that in the Sears part number for this transmission, but uh, it doesn't come up anywhere. So I might have to contact Peerless or, like I said, jacksmallengine.com um, with the actual transmission uh, part number and uh, figure this out. So hopefully I'll get, be able to get the parts shortly and I'll be back at it.